describe an experiment to measure the specific heat capacity of a metal or of a liquid. So you would probably use a block looking something like this, which has got a, a hole in the top for a heater, an electrical heater, and also another hole for a thermometer. Or you might just have a beaker of fluid and we'll use the same method for that. So let's take a look at the experiment. So first of all, let's do a diagram. So we're going to have the block, block of material. Now it might be the beaker of, of liquid. So I'm just going to do it with the block of material, but you can always change it. So we've got the, the heater slot there and we've got the thermometer slot there. Okay, so here is the electrical heater fitting nice and snug in there. Okay, and we have a thermometer which fits in there. So a thermometer and that is an electrical heater. Okay, the circuit diagram for this would be something like this. So we're going to measure the voltage across the electric heater and we need a power supply and uh, oh, before that we need to know what current is going to flow. We'll use an ammeter and so here's our power supply and that comes around like this to there and so what we're doing is measuring the current in this circuit and measuring the potential difference across the electrical heater the voltage okay we should also make sure that this block is insulated perhaps with some polystyrene foam, which traps air, which is a very good insulator. Otherwise, we will have heat loss to the surroundings. So we need some insulation to reduce heat loss to surroundings. Otherwise, our value that we calculate for the specific heat capacity will be a little bit off. In fact, it will be um, too high because we've lost energy. OK, let's do a few bullet points of how we'll do this experiment. So number one, we would measure the mass, the mass of of the solid or liquid. So we'd use a, a weighing scales for that. Number two, we would measure the temperature before, before heating. So we'll call that T1 and after heating and we'd call that T2 and we know that the change in temperature would simply be the end temperature minus the initial temperature, the final temperature minus the initial temperature it's a good idea to heat until you get a temperature change of about 15 or 20 degrees Celsius. So um, delta T should be approximately 10 to 20 degrees Celsius. Because if the change in temperature is too small, then the inaccuracies and the errors in this experiment will make our value for the specific heat capacity um, very inaccurate.
So we've got to have a decent range of the temperature difference. Okay, step three. So we're going to calculate the thermal energy, thermal energy input. So that's the energy that's converted from electrical energy to thermal energy in the block. And um, we will be heating up the heater, which will be uh, heating up its surrounding materials through conduction. And to calculate that thermal energy input, we need to measure by measuring the voltage, potential difference, V, the current, I, and the time of heating. So you're going to need a stopwatch. So I would have a stopwatch over here. Okay. And we would use the equation that the energy input is equal to potential difference multiplied by the current times by the time. And if you look at the flashcards in the electrical circuit section, then you'll see this equation there for the energy transferred in an electrical circuit. OK, so once we've done those three steps, the calculations are as follows. We know that E equals mass times specific heat capacity of the material times by delta T, the temperature change. If we rearrange this, we can get C, the specific heat capacity of the material, that's what we're trying to find, is equal to E over M times delta T. Well, we know what E is, that's there, voltage times current times time. We know what the mass of the solid or the liquid is because we weighed that beforehand. And we know what delta T is. That would be the temperature after minus the temperature before. One final point is if it's a liquid, then we would make sure that during heating that we would stir the, the liquid and agitate it so that the thermal energy would be uniformly spread out.